there, I'm Jackie Ferris. This week on the 302, we are at the Rehoboth Art League talking about a guest book of a different kind. I'm talking about The Doors of Fame, where dozens of famous artists, politicians, and patrons have signed their John Hancock and in some cases left a masterpiece to be remembered forever. You can't sign them, but you sure can check them out. The 302 is headed your way. Hey there, we are at the Rehoboth Art League talking about the Doors of Fame, a piece of art that has its roots in the history of the Rehoboth Art League. I'm joined now by Nick Sirator, who is a part of uh, the education process for people when they come to visit. Nick, thank yes. you so much well, for Well, thank you. Us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about Doors of Fame. It, they're basically the history of the Art League, right? They have a, a, a very major historical significance to the history of the Art League. Um, the Doors of Fame used to be long on the building of the original Art League, which is now our painter studio. And keep in mind, back in the day, this was a relatively agricultural community. And the painter's gallery was actually brought down on the canal as a kitchen of an old farmhouse. Uh, Colonel Corcoran and his wife, they, Colonel Corcoran had it brought up on the hill and that was the original Art League, which I'll talk about. But these doors were on that original building. And when the Art League came to fruition in 1938, as you can see on door number one here, June 18th, 1938, dedication at 3 p.m., the doors became, that was the day these doors became significant because the founding members and also people that uh, helped create the Art League signed them. Those are their names. And that started the tradition of each year, having people sign the Doors of Fame, people that were recognized that had, a, a, like I said, a, a very uh, profound impact on the Art League, their participation, their, their, their efforts to get this thing going. So each year, as you can see, the dates start at 1938, and these are people will sign the doors, and the doors included artists. They included people involved with Delaware governors, people families that were uh, rich in history that belong in Sussex County. So again, this these doors became a tradition, and up until actually recently. So each year we have uh, just a select few people who will sign the doors of fame. Now you mentioned some of the people that signed them. You have some very um, famous um, artists. We do. Uh, we namely, do. Um, one that just jumps right out is Jack Lewis. Tell us a little bit about Jack Lewis. Jack Lewis was uh, again an art instructor from the very get-go. Within like ten years after the the um, the, uh, the doors of fame were first signed, he has a rich history with the the art league. As again, as an instructor, he participated in uh, many of the art shows for decades. He became like a fixture and also a very notable Delaware artist. And recently we were just, we just received a collection from the Nancy and Russ Sunawick collection of 65 Jack Lewis's, which we will be presenting in two, in two years at our, 85, our 85th celebration, our anniversary. So what kind of artist was Jack Lewis? He was primarily a watercolorist and Jack also chronicled a lot of the history that was going on in Delaware and within the military. He did home life, you know, rural towns. He was from Bridgeville. And so his work really chronicles a day in the life of Sussex County. And there's a great film that was produced by the Sunowitz called If You Lived Here, You'd Be Home. It's a wonderful documentary on Jack's life. And his work, just again, just tells a story. It goes back in time. And they're more than just paintings, yeah. yes tells a story just like these doors tell Absolutely. a story. And you Absolutely. have a lot of um, influential female artists. We um, do. You have Ethel P.B. Leach. Tell us what she was uh, all about. What was her medium? What did she? She worked in oil. She was also an illustrator. So we have a lot of several, quite a few of her works that were, they were painted, but they were used in publications. And again, Ethel uh, studied in Wilmington. She studied in Paris, France. 
And so she, her, because of her cloud as an artist, she was able, and also, um, she was able to bring a caliber of artist down here with her, which uh, was enriching for the people who were studying. So with her clout, you know, we were able to get quite a few fantastic instructors and artists to be part of the Art League. Sure, and when you look at the doors, I mean, it's not just signatures. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, uh, you know, paintings, sketches, etc. Like, they each wanted to leave their own brand. Absolutely, there are little works of art within them. And if you look at the bottom of the doors, if you come and visit them, you have Egyptian paintings, you just have landscapes, what the artists were known for, illustrations. And you see a little chef at the bottom here. People who had, like, took, like, certain interest in uh, imagery, they made sure they captured it on the doors of fame. And each door is, uh, represents a different decade or a different time frame? Is Just right? pretty much, yeah, yes, absolutely. With door number one, we start at 1938 and it chronicles signatures and artwork through the 40s, up into the 50s, and into the early 60s. So even on top, you can see some dates that are dated like 1961. Door number two goes into the 60s and pretty much gets gotten filled up uh, up into like the 70s and then door number three chronicles like the late 70s, 80s and into the 90s. Excellent. We're going to yep. be right back and we're going to talk a little bit more about Doors of Fame. I'm Michael Evans from Battleaxe and I'd like you to ask me about the 302. Welcome back. We're talking about Doors of Fame with Nick and we're moving on to the second door. Now the second door has a lot, it actually has a wood stuck to it and seashells and a lot of little embellishments that, that you don't see on the first door, so it is a little different. It is, and the thing with the door number two is, again, it started in the 60s, so now we're going through up into the 70s on this door. And what's fascinating, not I'm glad you brought up about the artwork, because you can see the transition of art compared to the door number one. It's starting to get a little more contemporary, it's starting to get a little more loose. Things are being glued to it. Um, so again, just like artists grow, or artists, you know, art, there's art movements, to me, there was like a movement going on with door number two compared to door number one. You can even see by the signatures. The signatures are getting a little more loose. They don't have that penmanship from that you see like like three decades ago. They're becoming more contemporary. People are just like writing on them, and uh, they're just it's, you can just sense there's a more energy going on with door number two. I think because of the era, the decade that it was started, and I think with things that are going on in the art world. So again, you can see. The, the, the difference in the art signatures and it was, to me it was more of a vibe going on sure. than there was number one. But by the time you go from door one to door number two, this is when if you're an artist in the Rehoboth art scene and even outside of the area, yes. you want your name on these doors. Talk uh, to me about the prestige of these I, doors. I'm an artist and I would love to have my name on the door. And uh, again, it was a prestigious thing. But what happened was too is this, um, because the doors were filling up fast, I think what happened was at that time the Art League had to really kind of scale down how many people would write on it each year. So the people that who were selected, they were carefully selected, let's just say that, uh, again, what their contribution was to the league. And it didn't have to be so much, you didn't have to be an artist. You know, like I said, senators have signed the doors, governors have signed the door, people who were mayors, you know, people who worked in the city signed yeah. the doors. So again, they were very selective with who signed it. So this one here took a little bit longer to fill up. And I'm sure there was a lot of artists who wanted to have their names on it. I was going to ask, did you ever have an artist that kind of snuck his name or her name, for that matter, onto the door? There may have been. I'm not sure. <laughs> we would have to read the book. But I do get some jokes with some artists, like even today, who are exhibiting here, like, can I put my name on it? And I'm like, don't touch, don't, the, don't, don't even, even touch it. <laughs> now, the final door, it seems like it's not, it's not completely filled up. Did you get to a point where you were like, okay, you know, we really just have to preserve these things? There was a point in, in the history of the Art League where it was that it was going to end, because how much longer will this go on for? And plus, 
were limited with the, the style of Dürer since he was were the original on the, on the Painters Gallery, which was the original Art League. But I think they're, I think they're gonna revisit that. I think that, so it was stopped in 2014. I think that's gonna be revisited soon, especially with our 85 year anniversary coming up, that I think this door could, you know, we could see it, could use a few more signatures. A couple more signatures. Now, how do yes. you keep these doors? They're all in glass cases. They are. Yeah. I mean, these are timeless, priceless, works of art they in terms are. of history. How do you keep them? Well, we had Jan Haynes Gilmore, who is, who's is who been dynamite, a PhD, who has helped with the research and the history of the art league, very knowledgeable. She had these cases built for us. And they are temperature controlled. We keep them in our collections room, which is temperature controlled, where they're not being displayed. We have humidity silicon packets inside to protect it from humidity. Um, they're in low light, as you can see. Um, the glass is also conserv conservation glass, so we don't have them out in broad daylight because, you know, sun affects mm -hmm. paintings, also lighting, and so that's why they're kind of kept in a smaller, darker room. And it's amazing when you look at all the different paintings, there's so many, like, there's a, there's a Doors of Fame book. I guess, because there actually is a book I guess. on the wall. So tell us about the book. Dr. Gilmore had created this book and it's fantastic. It chronicles these doors. Every signature is noted and there's a little bio with each person. So you know who they were, what their position was, you know, what were they? Were they an artist? Were they, were they part of uh, the city, you know, a, a member of the city or just someone in society? So she really did a, a great job researching every name that's on this door. I can't believe, I, I can't even tell you how long this must have taken, but we do have the Doors of Fame book that chronicles it, and we do have it for sale here at the Art League. I'm curious, I'm thumbing through it right now, does it have a picture of the thing, like a diagram? Because I know that there are some of the images that you have from the doors on the cover, but does it go through? Yes, it goes through, so the, the first section will be door number one, and all the artist names are in alphabetical order. Wow. And same for number, you know, door number two and number three as well. Excellent. And really because cool. of and because of the, the the age of some of these signatures, they're starting to fade, or they had faded, you know, because back in the, the decades ago, these were not housed in the best, you know, at, uh, you know, atmosphere or conditions. So some of them have faded, but right now, I think we've done a pretty good job with preserving what we have. So again, it's not gonna have a diagram on there. So again, you just have to kind of hunt for it. Really, really interesting. You could spend hours just checking them out, but there's so much to check out when you come here. And we're gonna talk oh, a little yes. bit about what the Rehoboth Art League has to offer when you come for a visit when we return. Hi, I'm Joe, and there's so much to see and do here on the 302. Welcome back. We're at the Rehoboth Art League talking to Nick. Now, Nick, this gallery is gorgeous. There's so much going on. Let's talk a little bit. By the time this airs, these masterpieces are going to be gone. Yes. But talk to me a little bit about what we have going on here. It's a surrealism kind of It vibe. is. It's called, it's called Seascapes Underneath the Surface information. This is a collaborative group between two gentlemen, David Heatwell and David Curtis, who have known each other for a long time. And each year artists apply for exhibitions, you know, for the, the following year. And they were selected to have an exhibition this year based on their show. And as you can see, there's a lot going on in each individual piece. Their topics range from uh, political, uh, things, things that are going on right now in our country, uh, pollution, and basically the premise is, is that when you have a creation, things develop, and as they, the more they develop, the more they can collide, and then also then you have like it's just annihilation. But through that, there's a rebirth, but we don't know what the rebirth would be. So in their show, with this artwork, it's kind of hitting on some of these these things, some of this these ideas. It's just a very striking show. It's very bold as well. Excellent. And it, there's a lot going on in each piece. So we have visitors that will come here and just spend a long time looking at it because there's so much information 
and each piece, hence their title. So when you look at each piece, you mentioned you know the themes. I'm looking at a couple of them. There's a couple of yellow submarines and yes. octopuses and, and things. Basically, what do they say about surrealism? It just kind of like takes you out of reality, turns it all upside down, and makes you look at things from a darker kind It of does. Thing. It's to disturb the peace, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like again, surrealism is touching on something more than just what you're looking at as you would in a traditional landscape painting or a figure drawing or something that's a still life. This is imagination at its best. And again, it's just not picking up the brush and like making subjects or, or objects and tying them together. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. You know, you're extracting something. You're extracting an idea from an image and you're putting your message into it. Sure, and when you look at those, you kind of, you you think of Dolly because he's mm -hmm. the most uh, the f most famous surrealist Absolutely. that I can think of anyway. But when you look at some, the other artists, it kind of, you know, just the bold colors that make the image. I don't know, is that like a Cezanne inspired, like an, almost like an impressionist? There's a slash... impressionistic, there's also cubism going on in yeah. it. There's also a mosaic quality as well. Yeah. You know, and also sometimes artists will create a work of art where it's almost like wearing like 3D glasses. It becomes, it comes to life, you know? And so I think a lot of it's also experiment, making colors work to form an object yeah. instead of what we typically see as like, such as Dolly, you're really pushing the envelope to see things differently. And that's what the artist does. That's their job. You know, and seeing things mm -hmm. differently, it's not just on the canvas. Exactly. You also deal with sculptures, like in the next room, very interesting take on dementia and Alzheimer's. It really is. And again, the Constance McBride is the artist. Again, she was a person, an artist who applied for a solo exhibition and won one. So she's in our Tubbs Gallery. Her work, people walk in and are like, oh, this is eerie. But when they find out what it's about, they can understand or they can relate because they know someone who has had Alzheimer's, which is what the show is based on because of her mother. So in there you see these antique umbrella stands that are from a period of time. And on her are these busts of older women, they're made of ceramic. And Constance, through her memory, these busts were based on the women that were in her mother's memory unit. And they're named after, it's called the Lonely Girls Project. And each uh, lady is named after the room number they were in. But wires coming out of the back of the heads, the skulls are separated because of what's happening in the brain and nothing makes sense. It's all over the place. So she had to do this show. She wanted to do it in honor of her mom, but also to bring uh, uh, information to people about this, this disease. So it was part of her mission to like Alzheimer's awareness. It really is breathtaking and mm -hmm. with a very strong message. And yes. if somebody sees something, you know, while they're watching this show, mm -hmm. all this is for sale. You can come down here, you got a, a, a birthday present you need to buy or you want something for your house. This would be the place to go because you can walk up and walk out with things. Absolutely, it's all 100% original. We have hundreds of artist members. Part of their membership is that they're allowed to showcase their work here on a year-round basis. There's a limitation of how much you can bring in, but it's always fresh, it's always unique. It's not from a box store. It's not from something where, where you can get online. Everybody has the same thing. This is original artwork, and it ranges from sculpture to paintings to jewelry to blown glass to woodwork and to metalwork to mixed media. So all the mediums are really covered. You know, so when you stop in here, it is for sale. It's, there's price ranges from what you, your pocketbook can do up to a higher end art. So it's a nice variety and it's a real treat to work here because you, you, know, you never know what's going to be coming in here. Sure, yeah. sure. Every day is a different day. It is. New art coming Absolutely. in. Absolutely. So if somebody wants to find out you know, how they can come in and shop for art or pay a visit just to appreciate the art, what do they have to do? They can just stop. We're open year round. We're open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 4 and Sunday noon to 4. They can check out our website, www org. It has everything that we are doing. And we also offer education on a year-round basis. We have classes for people to come and enrich their skills. We have classes in drawing, painting. Uh, our pottery studio is a big thing. So we have education uh, offered year-round. We also have events offered year-round. We have our big outdoor show two weekends in a row in August, the first and second weekend. We have a member's fine art show. We have our member's fine craft show. 
but in between all year long. Again, going back to the artists who showcase here, people apply for exhibitions. So during the course of the year, each month, we rotate different artists in our buildings for these exhibitions. So there's always something going on here. Always new, always fresh. So if you want to be creative or bask in the glow of creativity, Absolutely. this is a place to be. Absolutely. We're here on three and a half acres in Henley Open Acres. We have a beautiful, beautiful uh, property to wander on. Right now, the historic homestead, which was the original property here, which dates back to 1743. Visitors can go through the homestead May through October and enjoy the beautiful gardens that are being actually renovated as we speak. So we do have a, a fairly beautiful campus to come and visit. It's an experience, definitely. Well, Nick, thank you so much. Well, thank you very us. much. I appreciate you having me. We'll be right back. information you can visit rehobothartleague.org. That'll do it for this week's episode of the 302. We're going to leave you with a stroll through the galleries so you can check out all of the artwork. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. Tell them you saw it on the 302.